We begin in London, Ontario, where the Liberal government is shelling out $74 million for housing. The money will fast-track the creation of more than 2,000 additional units in that city. It's the first announcement to come out of the government's housing accelerator fund. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says it's just the beginning, and he issued this call to action to communities across Canada. I want to challenge other mayors right across the country to step up with their proposals, too so we can get building more homes, increasing supply, and lowering the prices for families. For more on this story, I'm joined by Housing Minister Sean Fraser from London, Ontario. Minister, welcome back to the show. It's a pleasure to be with you again. Thanks for having me. At the announcement today, you and the Prime Minister praised the Mayor of London for a visionary proposal to increase housing supply in the city. But you're going to need more than London. So how many other mayors are following suit with these visionary proposals to increase units? Uh, look, we've got hundreds and hundreds of applications from communities right across the country. And I appreciate the way you've led into this because although today was about London, it was about so much more than London. This is about changing the way that cities build houses across Canada. London has set the bar and we now have new expectations for cities that are going to benefit from federal funding to change the way they build homes. This is great news and over the next number of weeks and months, you should expect to see me be rolling out announcements across the country that are going to have a meaningful impact that create thousands of new homes for communities across Canada. So you have other deals ready to go. It's not just London. You have other cities, other mayors, other councils who have signed up to the conditions you laid out today for the Housing Accelerator Fund? Uh, there are certainly some uh, formalities that need to be taken care of, but we're starting to see where the strongest applications are currently. Some of them I expect we will have to push a little further to get the productivity out of every federal dollar that we invest that we hope to see, but we are starting to get close over the course of this fall. I expect you're going to see that we're able to reach deals with a significant number of communities that are going to get building very quickly. Okay, you say you have to push a little bit further, because one of the things that seemed a little bit different today was the tone of the government, challenging municipalities to step up on housing if they want your help. So from the federal government's perspective, what is the biggest impediment right now to increasing supply? Is it mayors and municipal councils and, and the reluctance to be aggressive on development and zoning policy? There's no one uh, uh, explanation because the challenges in one community are very different than another. In some communities, mayors and councils are actually the leaders who are going to get housing built. Uh, but you do see cultures of nimbyism who've crept up right across the country. You see sluggish approval processes for building permits. You see zoning density decisions that actively restrict housing. What we want to see is mayors and councils that will legalize housing, that are actually going to help solve the housing crisis by creating space for their neighbors to live in the community. We want to see councils approve housing near transit stations. We want to see them build houses near university and college campuses. And we want to make sure they build houses that people can actually afford that allows them to access the services that they rely upon. The solution in London will be different than in Toronto, will be different in Pictou County, Nova Scotia, where I call home. But the reality is if we work with communities to identify the strongest possible plan and fund local solutions developed by local governments, we can break down barriers and get homes built like we haven't in a very long time. So is this simply a matter of incentives for municipalities uh, to step up, or do you also need some stick here and not just all carrot and, and maybe consider consequences for municipalities that stand in the way of increasing supply? Uh, it'll depend on the specific program that you're looking at, but I think we certainly need to have incentives, but people need to understand that they're going to be left behind if they don't make the kinds of changes. This is not just going to involve changes to the way that cities build home. This is going to require us to make changes to the way that we work provinces to incentivize home building. It's going to require that we put new tools on the table that actually incentivize builders to build, despite that we have a high interest environment, so we can help change the equation to make profits uh, for builders on projects that are actually going to produce homes that regular people can afford. We need to pull every lever that we have access to and I look forward to working across levels of government including with uh, governments that may be of a different partisan persuasion to get homes built in cities in every province in this country. But you know Minister when you look at the need and you've seen the numbers out today uh, from Canada Housing and Mortgage Corporation that Canada needs an extra three and a half million new houses by 2030 above what we're projecting to build to restore affordability. This announcement helps create about 2,000 units. So if you do some napkin math here, you're going to need a London announcement every 1.3 days for the next six years to hit the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation target. I mean, is that even close to feasible, that pace of development? 
Look, uh, the things that are worth doing are always hard. Uh, but keep in mind the announcement today was tackling one source of the housing crisis, which is getting cities to build and approve homes more quickly. There are other solutions we're going to advance as well, including changing that financial equation so developers see it in their interest to produce homes that people can afford, including measures that's going to grow the productive ca capacity of the Canadian workforce through a mix of training, through immigration, and investing to get more homes built in factories. There's no one silver bullet, but I'm confident that if we look at every aspect of the problem and put forward every solution we can identify, that we can actually restore a reasonable level of affordability that will allow people who go to work every day to afford a home in their community. That's the way it was most of my life growing up. Right. That's what we want to return to. But you know, the, the Housing Accelerator Fund, which, which this announcement comes out of, that, that was announced two budgets ago. So this is a, a new arrangement, but this is not a new idea from your government, and the country wants new ideas, new energy, and new solutions. When are we going to see that from you as the housing minister has a lot of pressure on his shoulders to help save this government? You know, one of the things that I take some comfort in is that many of the solutions that are out there are known to us and we need to muster the political will to implement them. Over the next number of months you're going to see me start building different facets of the plan that will be able to reach public, release publicly as soon as they're ready. It's going to tackle some of the different problems that I've outlined in our conversation today but in the meantime we're not going to wait for some magical date in the future to table the complete plan. We're going to be pushing stuff out the door as quickly as we can as soon as it's ready. This is a housing crisis. There is not time to waste, and we're going to do everything we can to address it head on in an all hands on deck moment. Okay, so the goal here, obviously, to add housing supply and ultimately bring down the cost of homes. But there are a lot of people already in the market. They own homes, they have a lot of equity locked up in their homes, and people are using it as maybe a savings tool for their retirement. To boot, increase affordability and increase access, do existing homeowners need to be prepared to take a hit on the value of their property? for Canada to get ahead on this? Look, uh, homes are, are too expensive for most people to even think of owning if they're not already in the market. But one of the things that we have to draw into focus is that if we build starter homes for young professionals in a community where no such home currently exists, that doesn't necessarily have a negative impact on somebody who lives in the next community that may have a different kind of home. If we build a senior's apartment for somebody who's looking to downsize at the end of their career, who wants to retire in the communities where their grandkids are being raised, that can actually free up a home of a larger scale. And it's, there are so many different factors that go into the market price of a home. We have to work to make sure that it doesn't continue to get out of hand, further out of hand, so more people see themselves out of the market. And we also have to put measures in place that make it easier for people to get into the market. So I can't predict with a crystal ball exactly where home prices are going to be five years from now, but we're going to do what we can to introduce more stock into the market that we know will be offered at a price that people can afford. That may bring down the average price of homes across a community, but it may or may not have an impact on certain homes that already exist in those communities, depending on local dynamics and market forces that may yet reveal themselves. So, so Minister, just as a final point, you mentioned NIMBYism uh, earlier in this conversation, the not in my backyard sentiment that exists when a lot of these density developments uh, are, are, are proposed. You need mayors and councillors to get on board and they are the most vulnerable to those NIMBY impulses. So how do you overcome that? I mean, I know you're going to come to the table with money and incentives, but the consequences for councillors and mayors who push ahead with unpopular development policies could be that they're voted out. So how do you deal with that? Well, if they want to point their guns at me and say that the housing minister made them build more homes so they can wel welcome more neighbours into their community, I am willing to be that target. The reality is the cost to the Canadian economy to uh, uh, restricting uh, access to homes for people who want to come to this country, want to move into a community, want to make a meaningful difference, offer their skills to a community that will grow the economy and support their neighbours. We need to make sure that they have the option to move into our communities by building more housing. If I have to be the person that says we're going to build more densely and mayors can say the federal government made me do it, then so be it. But we're going to work with willing partners who see the opportunity to take federal funding to change the way that they build homes for their community. It's the right thing to do and we need to take it seriously seriously and we need to act swiftly or if we're going to meet the moment. I have faith that we can do just that. Okay. Minister Sean Fraser in London, Ontario. Thanks so much for your time. A pleasure as always, David. Thanks for having me. Okay. So just how unaffordable has home ownership in Canada become and why? Here's the big picture. The home right now in Canada is more than $668,000. Let's break that down in mortgage payments. 
Prior to 2022, you might have had a rate as low as 2.99%, and that meant a monthly payment of about $3,200. But as of today, that mortgage rate could be above 6%, and that monthly payment would be more than $1,200 higher. And of course, that doesn't include home insurance, property taxes, or any utilities. Now, those high interest rates have also pushed rental costs to an all-time high. Landlords are now asking an average of more than $2,100 per month. There are three different major factors driving the price of homes higher. First, as mentioned, high interest rates. They've been hiked 10 times since last year in a bid to bring down the price of other goods. Second, there's a supply crunch in Canada. According to the Canada Housing and Mortgage Corporation, we need to build an additional 3.5 million homes by 2030 compared to the current pace of construction for homes to be affordable again for Canadians. Third, Canada's population is surging thanks to record immigration levels. The country is on track to welcome more than half a million new permanent residents this year alone. All right, so let's get back to today's announcement to build more homes in London, Ontario. Josh Morgan is the mayor of London, and he joins me now. Mayor Morgan, welcome back to the show. Yeah, great to be here. So put this federal money in context. It's about 2,000 additional units. How far does this go to solving the housing crisis in your city? Well, when you look at what this will do for our city over the next three years, we're going to build about 23% more housing than we otherwise would have. So this is truly an incentive for us to build more housing faster and bring those units to fruition. And it's also a chance for us to bring in some innovation and, and different approaches into the way that we're uh, we're building housing in our city. So, you know, as we as we made our application to this fund, we wanted to be bold. We wanted to try new things, and so you'll see us bring forward uh, zoning changes that will promote more transit friendly, higher density development. We're also going to look into new forms of modular and prefabricated housing. We're going to bring in financial incentive programs for ensuring that the capital of the housing um, for either developers or not for profits lands near rapid transit routes. Uh, we're even going to look at conversions of vacant commercial space uh, to housing units and in many downtowns there's excessive mm -hmm. commercial vacancies and uh, and turning those into residential units is something that can be done when you have the right level of support uh, and the right vision. Okay you mentioned zoning changes that you're going to bring forward because your council supported the densification that was a requirement to get this federal investment but as you just heard in my conversation with, with Minister Fraser, not everybody likes the idea of four units going on on a single lot so do you expect any pushback from the residents of London to allow that type of development in your city. Yeah, you know, there's always pushback on any sort of development, and that's not new to um, um, you know to this this process or the housing crisis we've had. It's always been a discussion that municipal councils have had. But what is different is each and every person who lives in the neighborhoods across the city is worried about their kids or someone they know being able to afford a house, being able to afford rent. And I think, you know, the way that the, the community is thinking about housing is fundamentally different than it used to be. And I have a council who has been very bold and aggressive in ensuring that we're going to move forward with increased density in our city. There is no other choice for us. So we, we cannot continue to sprawl outwards forever and ever. We've got to densify in critical areas. And, and we also have to give some as of right permissions across the city to allow homeowners to make some decisions on the way that they want to treat their properties. So, you know, it, it is not an easy discussion. There is always pushback, but it is a discussion that is absolutely necessary. And I'm confident that my council and I are willing to, to push through that and make sure that we can get the housing that our city needs. So, so what's your understanding, uh, Mayor, of the, of the timeline on, on when this money will result in affordable housing uh, for people? Because, you know, if this money goes toward a bunch of seven-figure McMansions, we're really not that far ahead on the affordability side. So how quickly can it happen and how do you ensure that these are a lot of entry level homes that you know average people can get into? Yeah, absolutely. So when, when you look at the way the Housing Accelerator Fund was designed, you actually can get uh, more funding from the government for ensuring that you have a depth of affordability within your application. And so a significant portion of our funding is actually to build more affordable housing units. We've been very successful under the Rapid Housing Initiative for multiple rounds from the federal government to bring those units to fruition quickly. And those are affordable units uh, that are uh, well below the market rate rents. Uh, we're also going to look at bringing on um, housing-related infrastructure and allowing for private sector development in critical areas in our city. Um, so there's a supply issue to this, but ultimately at the end of the day, we recognize that affordability is a factor in this and our application is greatly geared towards uh, bringing in affordable units and not just affordable units, but we also have a portion of our application dedicated to units with wraparound service supports because we have to supply housing for the most marginalized members of our community, people who can't just not afford a house, but need some level of other critical supports within that housed environment to be successful. But, but you know, developers and, and 
and I don't see this as a, a criticism. They're going to want to get as much, you know, money they can for an individual building lot as the market will bear. So, so how do you, as a council that signed on to this plan, compel a, a private developer to build a lot, build a house on a lot, at, at an affordable price? Yeah, well, uh, when you look at the type of housing that we need in our city, it's a whole range. Yes, there will still be some single family development that's going to happen in our city. But uh, the conversations that I have with developers in our city is they have limited capital to spend and they're going to deploy it in the way that is most effective to them. That's why we look at the options that we have. And through the Housing Accelerator Fund, we can now have the opportunity to fund incentive programs in uh, areas where we need high density. So our downtown, our transit corridors, our transit villages, uh, we can bring forward uh, CIPs, community improvement programs that allow for incentivization of the development in those areas to try to pull that developer capital into the areas where we need it as a city. And ultimately, as a city, that benefits us because when we grow inwards and upwards, that's much more cost effective from a municipal servicing standpoint. And so it's really a win win. But yes, there is incentivization that needs to happen to try to pull that capital into the type of housing that we absolutely need in this city. You know, the incentivization uh, that the minister is putting on the table, obviously, this money uh, for, on, on these conditions, it, it appealed to London, it appealed to you and your council. How appealing do you think it's going to be to other municipalities across the country with the federal government saying you have to meet these criteria if you want help dealing with this crisis? Well, I can tell you, um, being first is is a very exciting thing for us, but it also means a lot of my colleagues across uh, the country have been watching this, and I serve on the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. I'm also on the Ontario Big City Mayors, and I've had multiple text messages and phone calls today from colleagues to say, how did you get this money so quickly, and what can we do to follow suit, and can we take a look at your application? So I think there's a real desire from mayors across this country and councils to say, we want to get money to, we want to bring housing to fruition, and they're actually very interested in what we put in our proposal. And so I think they're very open mm -hmm. to the many things that need to be done to bring housing uh, to this city, to all of our cities, and to the whole country. So when we first met and spoke, it was back in April, and we were talking about a plan that you were rolling out to address homelessness in your city by building housing units along with some 24 7 uh, homeless hubs uh, essentially where, where is that project and how does it fit into this money you're getting from the federal government because you did talk about the need for marginalized uh, populations to get housing out of this Yes, so a portion of this funding in our application is actually used to support our whole of community response plan. So the transitional uh, housing spaces within hubs, as well as the support of housing spaces that will service that system is actually part of our housing accelerator fund application. And so we are pushing forward full steam with that plan that we talked about before. Uh, and not only that, but this federal funding is actually a key component of the funding that we need to bring uh, that plan to fruition. We also have a partnership with the provincial government and of course that uh, generous private uh, donor family mm -hmm. money of $5 million that was made available to us to, to really help us uh, get that plan moving. And, and when we help the most marginalized in our community, we take pressure off of a number of other services that Londoners rely on, whether that's emergency rooms, land ambulance, right. police response times, or just the general impacts on businesses in our downtown. Just as a final point, you said that this arrangement with the federal government today will mean 23% more homes than you were going to build over this time frame. If you look at the projections yeah. from CMHC, we need 100% more homes over the next seven years. So yeah. is this enough? What's missing? What needs to be done? What can be done at the federal level to help people like you at the municipal level? Yeah, I think continuing to partner, and I, and I would say there's an element of shared accountability here. It's not just the federal and municipal governments, the provincial governments, the building development sector, the not-for-profit sector, and the financial sector who, you know, provides the funding for many of the key projects, all have to recognize the role that they play, the responsibility they have, and pull in the same direction. The Housing Accelerator Fund is just one of many initiatives that we can pursue to bring housing. So when I say we're going to do 23% more, that doesn't mean we're taking the foot off the gas on the many other projects and the many, many other partnerships that bring housing to fruition in the city. So absolutely, we have to do this and more, and we're going to continue to work with all the partners available to us, including the federal government, uh, to not only do this, but continue to do more over the next decade. Josh Morgan, the Mayor of London, Ontario, thanks so much for your time again today. My pleasure.